today we're talking about surface area, which does have to do with three-dimensional figures. Okay. What do you think surface area is? Spencer? The area of all the faces. Yeah, the area of all the faces. Mm -hmm. So surface area is the combined area of all the faces of a 3D figure. Okay, so really surface area is still just area. Okay, it's not anything special, it's still just area. It's just area of a bunch of shapes all put together. Because we, and that's why I had to do that as a warm up too. A 3D figure is just a bunch of shapes put together to make a 3D solid. So like when we talk about a square pyramid, you're talking about a square and four triangles. But surface area is really just the area of all of those shapes put together. And you already know how to do all of those area um, calculations. In fact, this would be a good time. Why don't you pull up that pink formula sheet from area? When we talked about area, you're going to need that today. Okay, your pink formula sheet. Get that out now, please. You need it right now. My directions to you were just get out your pink sheet now. If your question is, do we need the pink sheet now, the answer is yes. Okay. Oh. I'm going to go ahead and put the definition for lateral area up there and then just give you a chance to copy it down. area is very similar to surface area, but remember how we always talk about the shapes are on the sides and then the bases sort of separate? Lateral area is the shapes are on the sides without including the bases. So if I'm looking at a prism, for example, the surface area would be the area of all of these rectangles plus the area of the hexagon. It would be like the area that you would have to cover if you were going to paint. The lateral area would just be around the outside without including the bases, without including the two hexagons. Okay? So lateral area is the area of the faces around the sides. That's what lateral means, is the sides. So you're not including the bases. Does that make sense? Okay, the difference between those two things. So here's why I had you take out that formula sheet. If the solid figure... Um, has polygons for sides or circles. Remember, polygon is just a fancy name for shapes. All you have to do to find the surface area is take the figure apart into whatever shapes it is and then find the area of all of those shapes. Okay? This works for prisms. Sorry, I forgot about that this morning. Thank you. Okay. Prisms, cylinders, and pyramids is what we're focusing on today because those are your shapes that can be taken apart into other shapes. So, for example, um, let's see. A pyramid could be taken apart into triangles and then whatever shape the base is. Okay? Um, a cylinder, what can a cylinder be taken apart into? Two, uh, two circles and a rectangle, and we know how to find the area of circles and rectangles, right? Um, a square pyramid would be a square and four triangles. We can find the area of a square, we can find the area of the triangles. 
All right, so we're focusing today on shapes that you can take apart into shapes that you know how to work with. Um, the ones that that doesn't work for so well, a cone, okay, because this shape over here is kind of weird. And so a cone just has a formula for it that we're going to talk about um, probably on Monday. All right, we're going to practice this for a couple of days. So right now we're just focusing on prisms, cylinders, and pyramids because those are your shapes that you can take apart into shapes that you already know how to work with. Does that make sense? No? Okay. So let's do some examples. And what I'm showing you here is what I'm going to want to see on your homework tonight. Your homework tonight is very short, but what I show here is exactly what must be written on your homework paper tonight. Okay? Terry? For the examples, we're going to do both. Okay? Yeah, the examples, I'm going to show you how to do lateral area and surface area. So it easy? It is. Yeah. It is. Okay, if you've got those area formulas, all right, which you'll need. So I've got this rectangular prism. What shapes make up this prism? All rectangles, right? But I'm going to try to draw them so that they at least make sense with what you're seeing here. So these front faces, all right, so this is like the top here, and this is the bottom. Can you see that? So those are going to be more like, almost like squares. Okay, so there's one. And then I just usually put like a times two up in the corner. Why do I do that? Because I've got two of the exact same thing, right? So I don't have to draw it twice. Then I'm going to draw this one here. Well, actually, let's put the numbers on this one. What would be the lengths here? Um, nope. Okay, what do you mean? Okay. So, four, four, and then the one's going up. Okay. So this length here is four. Yeah. So this is going to be four. And this length here is going to be seven. So actually, it really shouldn't look more like a square. It's just a little misleading in that picture. Okay. So now, and you can put those other numbers on there, but you only really need one of each. Now I'm going to draw this front rectangle. Okay. So here's the front rectangle. What lengths go on those? Okay, so we've got four again along the bottom. And, s no, not seven. What's up the side here? That's five. Yep, and I've got two of those as well, right? Does that make sense? Which rectangles am I missing? Because that covered the front and the back. Which rectangle am I missing? The sides. the sides, right? So this rectangle, I guess I should be using some other color markers. She said Deep breath. Deep breath. Yes, you should be writing this down. Okay, Darian, I don't need your help. Um, this rectangle here is the one that we're missing so far. And so that's going to be... What along the bottom for that pink rectangle? Seven. Seven. And five up the side. And I also have two of those, right? Yep. Okay, so let's find our areas. How would I get the area of this first rectangle? Please don't blurt it out. Please don't blurt it out. Area of that first rectangle, what would I do? Let me know, what would I do to get the area of that first rectangle? Four times seven, yeah? Which is 28. And then I've got two of those, right? So 28 times two is equal to 56. Okay. Area of this rectangle. Mm -hmm. Rebecca, how do I get area of this rectangle? Four times five, yep. Which is 20, and I have two of those as well, right? So 20 times two is 40. And then this last rectangle, what do I do for that? Ian, what do I do for that last rectangle? Thank you, seven times five. 
which is 35. Do I have two of those as well? Okay, so 35 times 2 is 70. If I'm looking for surface area, that means I'm looking for the area of everything. So I want to combine all of these areas together. So for surface area, I would do 56 plus 40 plus 70. It's going to be 166, I believe. Thank you. And now, what do you think your units are for this, Rebecca? Okay, yes, because you're still measuring area. Okay, so surface area is still square inches. Okay, or square whatever. Because it's just like finding area. It's just finding area of a bunch of shapes at the same time. All right. Oh, Alexis? So, if you wanted to just take out, if you just want to go right out area, then you just take out the two Yeah, yeah, and that's what we're going to do next. So lateral area is almost all of the faces added together, except you leave out the bases. Now with a rectangular prism, it's hard to tell what the bases are because everything is rectangles. But I would just always assume that it's the top and the bottom. So which one of these represented the top and the bottom of that prism? Well, the 4 times 7, yeah. This rectangle right here is what we want to take out for lateral area, and that's this one. Okay. So if I want lateral area, I'm not going to include that. I'm going to just do these two. Mm -hmm. Is the lateral area ever going to be bigger than the surface area? No. Why not? Yeah, because you're not including part of it. All right, so that's how you would do lateral area. Questions on that? Exactly. All right, let's do a couple more. Okay, this is what I'm going to need a visual for. I need to watch my This is a cylinder. What shapes am I talking about if I'm talking about a cylinder? Two circles and a rectangle. Okay, are the two circles exactly the same? Yes. Yes. So I can draw one circle and say that I'm just going to multiply it by two. Okay, because I have two of them. What do I know about that circle from this picture? The radius is three. The radius is three. Good. Okay, now let's talk about the rectangle. What measurement do I know on the rectangle? Okay, this height is six. So this is six. Now I want you to think, don't speak. Think for a minute what this length would be. Think for a minute. Darren, what do you think? Six. You think that it's six and six? Where are you getting six from? Because the whole diameter. Okay, so you think it's the diameter of the circle? Uh -huh. You've got the right idea, but not quite. Ben? Close. Very close. Pi times radius squared is the area of the circle. Is that what you wanted to say? Okay, you're close. Will? Almost. Jared, you think you know? Ben? Close. Close. Okay, so take a look at this. All right? The length of that rectangle. Now, one of, our, one of our guesses was that that's just equal to the diameter of the circle. Is the length of that rectangle, I don't know if hands to do that, is the length of the rectangle equal to the length across the circle? No. Okay. What happens to this rectangle? Where does it go in terms of the circle? It goes around. What do we call that when you do the distance around the circle? Oh. Circumference. How do you find circumference? In? Okay, so 2 times pi times radius or pi times diameter. So in a cylinder, 
when you're doing this with the net, let's see, I'm going to have to zoom that out quite a bit to be able to see that. Okay. When you're looking at the net of a cylinder, this length here is always going to wrap around the circle. And so this length is always going to be equal to whatever the circumference of the circle is. You're going to want to keep that in mind for any time you're working with one of these cylinder problems, is that you do have to find the circumference of the circle. Yep. Okay. So 2 times pi times radius, which in this problem would be 2 times pi times the radius is 3. which is going to come out to be about 18.8. .8. That's the length of the rectangle this way, because that length is going to be the same as the length around the outside of the circle. Okay, does that make sense for a cylinder? So now, how do I do area of a circle? Area of a circle. Luke, do you know? Do you have your pink sheet out? Okay. Should be. Darian, you're going to help? How do you do your area of circle? Pi times r squared. Okay. So for this circle, I'm going to do pi times 3 squared, which is going to be 28.27. Okay. And then what do I have to do with that area of the circle? Double it, right? Because I have two circles, one on the top, one on the bottom. So 28.27 times 2 is going to be 56.6 about. Okay, so there's my circles. How would I find area of the rectangle? of the rectangle. Spencer, do you know how would I find area of that rectangle? Um, uh, 6 times 18.8. Uh, yep. So 6 here, 18.8 here. I know there's a lot of stuff going on up here, but yeah, I tend to read that yeah ultimately this is the length of that side. So 6 times 18.8. .8. Do I need to double this one? Mm -hmm. Nope, because I only have one of them. And I get 112.6, or sorry, 112.8. So for my surface area, what am I adding together? <coughs> Tyler, which two things am I adding together for surface area? Okay, which are what and what, what numbers from up here? No. Um, not quite. The 100, Darian. The 112.8 is the area of the rectangle. Which of these numbers was the area of the two circles? Okay, up here, I did area equals pi r squared. That's one circle, and then I doubled it for two circles. So that's the number I'm using. Okay, so 56.6 plus 112.8. I end up with 169.4, and that would just be, I didn't give units here, so it would be square units. Now let me ask you this, what is the lateral area of this cylinder? Good, because the lateral area is just the rectangle, right? Alright, if you're doing lateral area, you're not including the two circles, so it's just the rectangle. We have just the rectangle right here, the 112.8. So lateral area is just 112.8 units squared. If you wanted to find lateral area first and then just add the bases onto that, you could always do that too. Okay. Questions on that one? Can we move on to our last one? Mm -hmm. What shape do I have here? Or what shapes make up this figure, I guess is what I'm trying to ask, Luke? A square and four pi. Okay, a square. What measurements go on the square? 
measurements go on the square? Alex, which measurements? Okay, on both sides, right? Because it's a square. So 25 by 25. Do I only have one square? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then I also have triangles. You're right. I do have four of them. Okay. Which actually makes it easy. I can just find one triangle and then multiply it by four. All right. What length goes on the bottom of the triangle? 25. And then what other measurement do I know on the triangle? Here, go ahead. 32 is the what? Height. Okay, so this going straight up and down is 32. All right, how do I find area of the square? Ryan, how do I find area of the square? Mm-hmm. Yep, 25 times 25 is 625. So there's my area of the square. How do I find area of a triangle? Mm, heard it from a few places. Base times height divided by 2, or 1 half base times height. So I'm going to do 25 times 32 divided by 2. Whoops. I end up with 400. <coughs> and then what do I have to do with that 400? Well, I have four of them, four triangles all together, right? So I'm going to do 400 times 4, which is 1,600. Okay, so for surface area, I'm going to add together the 625 and the 1,600. Two thousand two hundred twenty-five square feet. Which one of these is lateral area, or what do I do for lateral area? Will? Yeah, lateral area would just be the triangles, right? Not including the square. So basically, I just take this out, and I'm left <coughs> with just the sixteen hundred. Okay, so lateral area is just sixteen hundred square feet. Questions on that? So really, this is the same as what we were doing before, okay, where we were finding the area of all those shapes. It's just a matter of looking at a 3D figure and saying what shapes are in there and deciding which ones to add together, okay? Homework today.